All right, folks, so I just got finished with my X-Men watch-along. Playlist of is up there, by the way, in case you haven't seen it. And, you know, I'm feeling, you know, maybe i do something else, right? The Snyder Cut drops later this month. I'm not a big fan of the DCEU films, but I figure it's time to revisit most of them and review them. So, folks, here's my review of Man of Steel. Let's talk about it. Firstly, uh, why is the opening on Krypton so long? It's like 20 minutes, uh, and it's really not necessary for it to be that long. Uh, we even follow, like, uh, what's his name? Jor-El, I think, Superman's father. Uh, just going on this whole quest. It can't be explained in, like, a few words, and then you just cut to Zod trying to take over, them sending Superman off. It's way too long and uh, ridiculous that it's this long in the film. It's ridiculous. Folks, there is some very inspired casting here. You have Michael Shannon as Zod, incredible actor, great at villains, obviously. Uh, got a pretty good character. Russell Crowe, Lawrence Fishburne, Henry Cavill, who of course, you know, is sort of unknown then, but he's a great Superman. Amy Adams as Lois Lane, that's genius. Kevin Costner, what the... How, I mean, this film must have been expensive, obviously, but uh, some great, some of the greats, some of the greatest actors. My question is, wouldn't everyone uh, who sort of, you know, was aware of Clark's powers but not really sure to the extent of it, once Superman shows up, aren't they all just going to know that it's him? Uh, there's a few other moments in this film that make me think, like, this would be shut down pretty quickly, especially when he starts working with the government. But, uh, yeah, seems like they would instantly know, oh, that's Clark. And then something that bothers me is that I remember when I watched Batman vs. Superman the first time, that Batman starts, like, shooting people with guns, right? Which my review will be up soon, of course, because uh, that's the next film that I have to watch. Uh, I haven't seen I haven't seen that yet. Uh, I was filming this review, so maybe my opinion will change of that. But I remember Batman shooting guns, and I'm like, Zack Snyder really doesn't get these characters. And I feel it again, sort of, with Superman, because he's supposed to be the bigger man, right? Like, not put poles, put a truck and uh, a pole in the parking lot because of something petty some guy did. That's Superman's entire character is to always be the bigger man. And maybe he breaks once in a while, like at the end of the film, sort of. I'll get to that later. Uh, but he doesn't feel like that here. That's not really set up. And again, he sort of has this relationship with his dad, Kevin Costner's character. We're sort of conflicting because his dad is like telling him not to go be the good guy sometimes. And I'm just really, I'm a little confused at what messages they're trying to promote here and what Superman they're trying to create. Speaking of Kevin Costner, Superman's dad, why did he let himself die? There's no good reason for him just dying, letting himself die. He can no longer help Superman uh, grown to the person he wants him to be now. This isn't really a pivotal moment for Superman. I don't think it affects him in any major way like Batman's parents dying. Uh, really forced, corny moment. And folks, this film really blew me away in terms of the special effects. It is absolutely stunning, like 98% of the time. There's a few, like the personally, the leaps, whenever they have to leap or jump or something super fast, uh, looks pretty cringy, I have to say. But everything else is incredible. Smashing through buildings, you know, crumbling mountains. Uh, mountains. Uh, I don't know if I said that right. I said mountains or something like that. Anyway, incredible stuff. Absolutely incredible visual effects. I looked it up. It wasn't even nominated at the Oscars. That is a travesty. That is a travesty. And then one scene that just really worked for me was when Zod is talking down to the people, uh, you know, through like the TVs and stuff. It's pretty scary stuff. You know, the dark tone really works uh, for a modern day Superman, you know. And then so, uh, again, just another gripe is that couldn't the government just, I mean, we know they have face scanning technology. They could easily, easily just uh, any, any possible way of just find, looking at Superman's face and comparing it to other people. And even says, like at the end of the film, that he grew up in Kansas. So then now you've, the search is even more narrowed down. Find him. It's so easy. Come on. You don't need a $12 million surveillance drone for that. Are you effing stupid? One of your surveillance drones. That's a $12 million piece of hardware. And so at this point in the film, besides the very long opening, I'm like, okay, you know, this is pretty enjoyable. But then once Superman and Lois get taken by Zod, it becomes boring and uh, just pretty much nonstop action from there on to the end of the film. And the all character moments that were semi being set up are just smashed in favor of uh, cheap action, which the action is good, of course, but you need a balance. You can't have that over the overabundance. You can't have an abundance of action uh, and not these character moments replaced by this boring, boring sequences back to back to back. Just a side note here, there is so much product placement in this film. It's not even funny how much product placement there is, but it is funny. 
because uh, of course it is. Uh, maybe like the most I've ever seen in a film in terms of product placement. It's ridiculous. And then major spoiler here, folks, if you haven't seen the film, I think I already said it earlier in the video, so uh, a lot of good this warning is doing. But when Superman snaps Zod's neck, it's supposed to be a big moment, right? Because he's Superman. He's breaking his moral code. Uh, he's, you know, snapping. His, he's basically saying goodbye to Krypton. He's saying goodbye to, even though, you know, he sort of already made that decision. But I don't really feel that weight, I have to be honest, because I never got this vibe from this Superman that he was this morally, on the moral high ground, uh, as opposed to everyone else, as opposed to Zod especially. Uh, and so when he snaps his neck, it just feels like, you know, the usual relief of defeating a villain, not anything major, like he really sacrificed his morals for the greater good of the people. So that emotion, that, uh, that scene really isn't earned, unfortunately. So folks, uh, just my main gripe, honestly, is the abundance of action traded for character moments. I have a few, you know, little nitpicks here and there, uh, but this film really could have been something great exploring the character of Superman. And Superman, inherently, his powers aren't what make him interesting. You know, he's so overpowered, and that's ridiculous. It's how that is. It's how that works in an environment around him. This is just why Lex Luthor is a great villain to him. Lex Luthor's a normal guy. It's the intelligence battle, it's the wits battle, it's the moral battle. And they trade all of that for just easy punches, easy action. And uh, folks, I still enjoyed it enough, I think. But Man of Steel has to be a B. Which, of course, uh, is not a good start for the DCEU. I guess X-Men started the same way. But uh, personally, I've seen, I think, most of the DCEU films. And it only gets worse. So... Stay tuned for that. All right, folks, so that's my Man of Steel review. I know some people really like this film, uh, and Zack Snyder in general. I have to say I'm not really a fan of either, uh, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, that's my review of this film. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, especially if you're you know, one of these Zack Snyder fans and like this film. Uh, I am going to see the Snyder Cut. I am going to review it, and I'm going to keep reviewing the DCU films and rank them at the end of it. So stay tuned for all of that, folks. I'm EDPC Reviews, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.